Hey friends, Catherine here. I am going to be painting a waterscape today using uh, Q-tips as the background, well, for the background, to make the background. I haven't decided what I want to do in the foreground, like the subject yet. I know I want the I know I want it to be water, but I haven't decided what I want the subject to be yet. So if you guys have any suggestions of what you think the subject of the painting should be, uh, let me know. I am looking for ideas for the, the object of the painting right now. I know that I want a watery background, but I don't know what else yet. So let's get to it. Let's see, I think I'm going to start by just doing everything in a dark color. Mm. And I want a sponge brush for that. Let me go grab a sponge brush real quick. There we go. There we have it. One sponge brush. And I want to do everything in a dark color and then I want to go through and put light over the top of it, uh, interplaying back and forth from the top downward. Um, this was a canvas with a pre-printed design on it, but I'm not a particular fan of this design, so we're not going to use that, we're just going to paint right over it. Um, let's start off with the Delta Cream Coat Navy Blue, and see where that takes us. Let's just put some of the blue out on our palette over here. That's probably enough to get started. And I'm probably going to want to darken that up a bit more with like some black. So let's just drop a little bit of black right into the center of it and then mix that all together and see, see how we like it. Might end up adding a little bit of violet. Oh, this is the Apple Barrel Jet Black, by the way. Um, that's turning out nice and darker. That's coming along to a color that I like, but I do actually probably want to add a little bit of violet to it, or maybe like a little bit of dark green. Make it greener. Yeah, I want to make it greener. Let me, I've got, this is the Apple Barrel Christmas Green. It's just Add a little dab of that and see how it treats us. Yeah. Okay. That's a pretty good color, I think. I think I, because it's going to be, since it's going to be water, it's going to be mostly blue, but I think I want it to lean toward green, you know? So let's... Let's start laying that on and see how we end up. Okay. Just putting it all over the place. That's actually going farther than I expected it to. Nice. It's not quite entirely covering the printing on here. I don't know if you can see it. It's not quite entirely covering the printing, but I think we can make it work. I think two layers and that'll be entirely covered. And then we can go over it with like our cotton swabs, the texture. Okay. All the way over. And then wrap down the sides. So we'll just Take and till it slate and do our sides. It's always recommended to paint the edges of your canvas. It makes 
for a nicer and more finished looking piece. It's a good idea. Now, obviously, if you've got like a canvas board rather than like a stretched canvas, you're not going to have sides to paint over. So that's not a big concern there. But um, for stretched canvas, I do recommend painting down the sides. I'll grab a little bit more paint, actually. go one more side to go go okay all right and now for a second coat so that it really covers this up and make sure that we don't have any of that pre-printing showing through. So let's scooch this back into frame. There we go. And Just kind of scrub it on anywhere where it doesn't look entirely covering. Anywhere where I can see any of the pre-printing showing through or anything like that. Go. Now you're probably looking at this and saying, I may well I may as well have not had it in at, have added any green because it doesn't look particularly green, it just looks dark. And yes, I agree with you, it does kind of just look dark. But that doesn't mean the green isn't in there, and that doesn't mean that the green won't come up to the surface when we're painting the rest of it. So <laughs> please excuse me. <coughs> oh. So we've got that background done. Got a second coat on that should cover everything. Now let's start with our other colors. Pull that out of the way, grab a new one. And let's start with some white. This is a Delta Cream Cloak White. We'll put a generous amount of that on there. And then maybe our Delta Cream Coat Ultra Blue. See how we like that. All right, it's the one I always have trouble with. And we will load up with a little bit more of the navy blue in case we want to mix it into anything. And toss out some folk art minted aqua because aqua is just another word for water and it's green tinted like we were talking about and a little bit of craft essentials dark yellow because we want to lean it toward the green spectrum okay so i think we're going to start with just a touch of the yellow into some white and mix that in and then put there we go that nice really pale yellow onto a tiny tiny selection of um well i say tiny a small selection of q-tips uh cotton swabs and go ahead and just put some of those right at the top up here.
Okay, sort of like that. Because it's going to be narrowing like it's getting further away. And it's going to be just a tiny bit of these. These are going to be pretty much overpainted by everything else. I just want them to kind of be in there. Okay, and then let's lean a little bit more into the blue. So we'll pull over some of this blue and some more white and maybe some of the minted aqua. Go. I'm going to go into that with the same dauber that we had before and just kind of go through that color that we laid down to begin with, I think. Just kind of through it and covering over it. And then go a little bit darker. Take it a little bit darker. Okay, and then go around that. Pick it, pick some more up, go back in, around that, further out to the edges, down below and through and underneath and around. Just kind of something creating a bit more width and depth and things like that. All those words that you use when describing water. You know the ones. There we go. Okay, now darker still. You might have picked up a theme here. <laughs> Go. Let's take that more toward the green again, I think, though, too. Going darker and more green a little bit. Start introducing some of this, maybe. There we go. That's something looking like a color that I'm liking for the next stage. Okay. Up into the corners and somewhat across the previous ones because we are going to pick up some of that previous color is going to show through. Go. And let's tilt it and get that top edge too. All the way over the top. Just kind of dab everything around, fill the space in, get it all around there we go and then around the sides a little bit too because that's going to be color wrapping down the sides okay and then and over here Okay, somewhat in 
this direction maybe. And lead it down more. It's just because the lightest part isn't still showing in those bottom ripples. I'm trying to create ripples here, kind of, sort of, if you can tell. You may not be able to tell. Who knows? Who knows what it'll look like until it's done? These things change, but I'm sort of trying to make like a ripply thing going on. Okay. Then, next step, make it darker. So take some more of this dark blue, mix it in, grab a little bit more of that yellow. There we go. I'm definitely gonna end up having to get out more of the darker blue. But we'll see how that goes. Make it darker. Okay. Then, continue on. Grab some more, take that, run it in, and around, and out, and in between. And bring it down. And around the outside without dipping all of my fingers into it completely. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but painting is not a clean thing for me. It's fine. It'll be fine. It's just not a clean thing. It's not a clean activity. go something like that and then more in between here so we blend this out further and then down further because the idea is to go out and down or something like that maybe who knows who knows with these things the idea is just keep dobbing until it's something that you like that's the idea. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't even changed my Q-tip thing this entire time. And honestly, when you're gradiating, gradiating? When you're gradiating from a darker, from a lighter color to a darker color, or as long as you're going the same direction, you don't really need to change doesn't really need to swap out for different colors. I don't think anyway. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see what it ends up like and then we'll know. We will find out. Okay, around the edges and like this, and maybe like right there, cover up some of that darker color that's coming through. Now make it darker. Go. <laughs> that's just kind of the, that, that uh, cream coat navy blue and mixing whatever's left on our little palette here in with it so that it's pretty much that navy blue color. Maybe we should go a little bit greener. Eh. Nah, we'll see how it runs. Actually, yeah, let's take some yellow into it. There we go. Okay, 
I like that. Now, dub it in and see how it goes. Just working our way out and down, kind of trying to make it watery. Let's see how it works. Go. That's sort of coming along, I think. Definitely going to end up introducing some more black, though. This is not as dark as I want it to end up. That's all right. We can take it there. Just keep going until you're satisfied. Well, until I'm satisfied, anyway. Go. Let's actually take this one out kind of wide. Wider than we were previously bringing them. Start to make it a bit more diffuse. There we go. And then around the edges. Something like that, I think. That side and then the other side. Okay, now, darker. I think we're gonna have to start tilting into the black. So let's pull up a little bit of black. Ooh, that might be too much. I don't know, we'll see. We will mix it together and we will find out. Yeah, that's gonna be too much black. Let's take some yellow into that. Mm, that was maybe not the direction that we wanted to go. Maybe some white. Might lighten it up some, mm, or grade it. Might have to end up adding more blue. Although gray is not too bad, actually. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I kind of like the gray. Let's roll with the gray and see how we end up. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. I decided we're going gray, you guys. I also punched a hole in my... in my thing. So, I've got gray on my placemat now, too. That's alright. It'll be what it'll be. Ooh, but I do like that gray and it's darkening it up to a place that I actually want it to be that was that was a good choice that was a choice and not an accident and it was a good choice because I'm liking the direction that that's going all right if you guys are liking these Q-tip backgrounds, cotton swab backgrounds, let me know. I'm having a lot of fun doing them and I like the effect that they create, but if you're not into it, 
I can always just do it on my own time and share other things with you. So, if you're not liking it, let me know. And if you are liking it, let me know and I'll continue to share it with you. Go. That is pretty well covered, it looks to me at least. And I'm really liking how that gray went. I'm very pleased with that. So let's finish up our sides and the bottom and we will call it a day like i said i still haven't decided what to paint on this what the subject of this piece should be i'm kind of leaning toward a cthulhu or maybe a dolphin if you have any suggestions i'd be happy to hear from you because i just don't know i don't know what i want to do something i want to do something what that is yet though, I do not know. So tell me what you would do. Tell me what you would paint. Tell me what you think I should try. And I might do it. Go and see, finish this edge up. And then show you the final, final thing. Okay. No. Mm. Too dark. I shouldn't have done that in the middle. Now I've got to commit to it. There we go. There we go. Okay. Anyway. Suggest things that you would like to see painted over top of this. Um, and... I might do one of them. Who knows? Anything could happen. I hope you guys like it. If you do, let me know. Leave a like. Leave a comment. And remember to subscribe. And I will see you guys all later. Bye!